How would you design a communication app for kids? Hey everyone, I'm here today with Peter to do a mock product management interview. I'm super excited to have Peter on the show, but before we jump into the question, Peter, could you go ahead and introduce yourself for folks watching? Yeah, uh, it's really great to be here, Stephen. So I am a PM at uh, Credit Karma, and previous to Credit Karma, I worked at a bunch of big tech companies from Amazon to Facebook to my Microsoft. And uh, like you, I'm also passionate about um, helping people transition to product management and help people grow in their career. So in my free time, I also wrote a product management book called Principles of Product Management. Yes. Awesome. And we'll leave a link to the book in the description below, and we'll be talking more about it towards the end of the show as well. Um, well, Peter, it's great to have you on the show. Um, for those of you watching, Exponent helps you land your dream tech job. We help you do that with our online courses, our coaching, our community, and our videos like this. Um, I'm super, super excited to have Peter on the show today. If you want to check out more videos like this, go to tryexponent.com um, or subscribe to our YouTube channel and send us a like. Um, Peter, without further ado, would you, you're ready to jump into the question? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Um, so today's question, what I'd like to ask you is, how would you design a communication app for kids? Um, that's a good question because I have a kid myself. I have a two-year-old daughter. and uh, you know, I, I can see the crib. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, cool. So um, let me take a moment to think about it a little bit, and then I'll get back to you. Yeah. Sounds great. Take your time. Um, cool. So how I actually kind of approach uh, these problems is like, you want to start with, uh, what the customer problem is, right? And then after we kind of uh, agree on the customer problem we want to solve, we can look at um, uh, is there any kind of existing solutions that are solving the problem? And try to summarize that by saying, like, what is the most important customer benefit that we're trying to deliver? Um, then we can move on from the understand the problem space to actually identify a solution. And the identify a solution, we can walk through the user journey that people have. Uh, in terms of like, you know, kids communicating with each other. And then we can figure out what we want to build and what the MVP is. Does that sound good to you? Sounds great. Great. So let's start with the understand the problem side. So first of all, the first question is like, who, who is the customer here, right? And obviously, we're trying to design an app for kids, a communication app. So kids is definitely one of the customer segments. Uh, another customer segment uh, is probably the parent, uh, because parents really care about uh, who kids are talking to and what they're saying. So in terms of the kid, um, there's different like age ranges for the kids. There's like toddlers, there's like people in preschool, three to five years old, and then there's like teenagers and so on, right? I, I think we should kind of narrow down the problem space a little bit. Let's kind of try to narrow down to, um, I would probably pick like people in preschool because toddlers are just still learning how to talk <laughs> and still learning how to communicate. And teenagers, they probably are old enough that can, they can just use like a regular communication app. They don't need to use uh, like a special app for kids. So let's focus on the preschool age, like three to five years old. And uh, let's also think about the parent needs, right? Does, does that sound good to you? That sounds good. Yeah, let's dig into that uh, customer segment. Okay, cool. So we have two customer segments. We have the parents and then we have the preschool kids. So let's think about, first of all, the parents. Like what, what kind of pain points do they have when we think about kind of helping their kids communicate with each other. So I know that as a parent, um, you know, I, I think most parents are kind of like a little bit of a control freak and um, they really want to know what their kids, who their kids are talk, talking to and what they're talking about, right? So they, they want to kind of like monitor the kid to a certain extent. But I, I think uh, parents also want to help kids uh, build social skills and uh, continue to learn and grow. Yeah. So that I think from a parent perspective is about control and about helping the kids develop. Uh, and from a kid perspective, from a preschool kid perspective, uh, you know, they're pretty hyperactive and they're just learning to express themselves. Uh, they probably have start, are starting making friends at preschool and they just want to have fun, right? They're not really at an age where they have to like, you know, study math or like <laughs> do a bunch of like after school learning, they just want to have fun. So I, I would say from a kid's perspective, they want to express themselves and connect with their friends in a way that's actually fun. Yeah. Cool. So then let's think about like, okay, what, what kind of existing solutions are there in the market that already try to solve the parent and um, kid problems? 
I think for the most part, um, this kind of happens in person, like uh, you, you either at school where the kids are making friends or like play dates at the playground and so on and so forth, right? Uh, I haven't really done my research on like what kind of apps are out there to help kids communicate with each other. I, I know I, I know Facebook has a Messenger Kids Kids app, uh, which I think is pretty similar to what we're talking about. It like gives parents control over what kids are, you know, who kids are talking to and what they're talking about. But also, I'm not really aware of any other solutions. I'm not sure if you're familiar with any other. No, for the purpose for the purpose of this interview, you can kind of assume the knowledge that you have. Okay. So um, yeah, so I I, th I think the existing solutions are pretty sparse. Mo most of this interaction stuff is happening in person. So let's kind of like uh, summarize the section by trying to understand, you know, given all of these uh, pain points, what is the actual pain point we want to solve, and what is the most important benefit we're trying to we're trying to de deliver here. Um, so I think it's important to to you, you have to think about both parents and kids because like you know ultimately the parent is the person who's going to actually help the kid on board. To this communication experience, so I think uh, if I were to summarize in one line, it would be probably um, like the fun ways for kids to connect with each other uh, and for parents to keep control. Like that's that's kind of what we're trying to do do here, right? Cool. So let's think about so given that kind of like a benefit statement, let's think about what the solution space could look like. Um, so again, we have two customer segments: we have the parents and we have the kids. So from a parent perspective, I think um, I, I think we should let the parent uh, take control of adding the contact, as opposed to the kids just adding anyone they want. So the parent will start by adding the contact, and then there's probably going to be like a parent dashboard or some parent control where they can monitor the kids' activity, whether uh, who they're talking to, uh, you know, how much time they're spending in the app, what kind of messages or pictures they're sending, and so so on. And probably they also want to be able to block contacts or like have some sort of a you know, block mechanism, right? So parent is like add contact, monitor activity, and be able to kind of block. I, I think those are kind of the three things the parent wants to do. And then from a kid perspective, uh, you know, if they open this app, they probably want to see a list of uh, the contacts they have. Uh, probably like you know, hit hit hit, um, you know, tap on one of the contacts or tap on one of the friends and have some sort of a interaction that is like a fun and positive experience. And I think the real interesting part of this. Uh, Problem is, you know, how do kids interact with each other, right? So they can interact with each other by kind of just like sending a bunch of text messages, stickers, or like pictures and so on, or they can just make a bunch of like you know phone calls and video calls. Uh, but I think what could be more interesting because you know think back to the benefit, which is like we want to help kids have fun. Uh, so you know, like one idea could be like they can add a face filter for themselves and start making animal sounds to talk to each other or like add a background. Um, they can read a story to, to, together, or like you know, li listen to a story that could you know either be read on a Mac or even read by a parent. And I think uh, you know the last I idea I have is just like play some sort of game to together, right? Whether it's like playing Pictionary together, or like I don't know, I identifying an animals, or like you know doing simple math problems, some sort of game that makes the interaction like fun and also like kind of structured, if that makes sense. So those are some ideas, and um, in terms of like what we want to do in terms of like uh, MVP, like um, I think this app needs to differentiate itself from like uh, just a regular like Facebook Messenger or like a communication app. Um, so I think we do need to build the ba basics around like then the parent add the contact and monitor activity, and then the kid you know send text messages or like you know stick stickers to each other. Uh, but I think there needs to be some sort of differentiation, right? So I, I think in terms of differentiation, we should pick one idea and um, between like, you know, applying a filter, <laughs> uh, impersonating an animal, reading a story together, or playing a game together. Let's kind of like pick out one idea that we think the kids would be very interesting and we can continue to build and expand from that. Um, so I think between those three ideas, you know, thinking about my daughter and thinking about kids, you know, um, I, I think. Their entire day spent at preschool is like spent playing games to a certain extent, and um, you know they maybe just spend like you know some time reading a story and like trying to impersonate animal, but that's almost like a game too. So I would want to try to build some basic games that they can play in this app, in addition to being able to kind of like you know send text messages and so on to each other. Yeah. 
Um, so let's think about what kind of games they can build, right? So, um, I mean, the game, I, I think, you know, just, you know, leaping forward a little bit, the real promise of that if we're going down this path is that we can build a couple of games to start, but eventually it can become a platform for other developers and other people to build games on this. And then you have a wide selection of like games and interactions that kids can play with beyond just like simple text and, you know, sending pictures to each other. Uh, to start, I think we can start with some simple games like drawing or like, um, you know, being the first to identify what an animal is or like 20 questions or like some sort of simple game that kind of like lets them interact with each other. Uh, and, and then we can, so, so yeah, so the MVP to summarize is like a, a parent dashboard where they can add contacts and monitor activity, a, a, a basic communication stuff around like sending texts, maybe stickers and so on. And then like one or two games that kids can play with each other. Uh, and then that will probably become like the main draw of that because you know that's like differentiated and different from what's available in the market. Yeah. Sorry, I, I talked I talked a lot, but <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's great. I, I'm curious. So, so we're we're sort of positioning ourselves more towards a gaming platform. Um, the original prompt is around communication. So, I'm curious, how do you plan on bringing the communication in with the gaming experience? Um, and then also, I mean, would be curious to hear a little bit of how you think about the control aspects um, for our, like, what does the parent see exactly? Um, so, you know, you can go in either direction. Also, feel free to, I don't want to derail your, your current line of thinking, but I um, would love to hear on both points at some point. So, I, I you know, I, I would think of playing games as structured communication as opposed to just like playing games, right? Because I think kids, you know, in a three to five year age range, they have like pretty short attention spans. And if, if you don't like structure your communication in, in around a topic that they're interested in, like, you know, animals or like, you know, drawing, they will lose attention very quickly and they will not, they will not be able to kind of like continue talking to each other. And, and also it's a structured communication also helps them learn about particular things, which the parent wants, right? Going back to the need. So yeah, so I, I think we should design games that are ideally like both educational, both help with communication, like learning new words, and also lets the kid have fun. Like it's, it's probably a tough, tough thing to do, but I think we're gonna try to design games around that. Um, in terms of, uh, and, and ju just to be clear, like if the kid just wants to talk to another kid, like through just like a chat messages, they can still do that. But a game is an option they can play if, if, they, if they get bored of chatting with each other, right? Um, so in terms of parent controls, um, so we talked about the parent uh, user journey around like adding a contact, monitoring activity, and blocking contacts. Uh, so I think adding a contact, you know, they can coordinate with other parents. They can get the kid's uh, username or the phone number to add the contact. There's a pretty standard flow there. Uh, monitoring activity, you got to find the right balance here. I think kids this age don't really care too much about privacy, but you know, when they become teenagers, they obviously want their parents to see all their messages. Uh, but since we're targeting preschool kids, I think, yeah, it makes sense for them, for the parent to be able to monitor. Um, yeah, I, I think for, for this age, it does make sense for a parent to monitor what they're talking to each other about and like some aggregate stats around like how much time they're spending talking to who. Just like, it, it can just pique interest and also like kind of help the parent see what is going on. Um, we also might want to think about limiting the types of content uh, the kids can share. Like for example, it's a lot easier to, mo to monitor like uh, text and stickers than it is to monitor uh, pictures or like you know audio or video messages or like if if you enable video calling in this app, it's, it's a lot harder to monitor that like because the kids can do whatever they want, right? So just more thinking about that. Maybe, maybe to start, we just want to limit it to like um, text, games, and like you know cute stickers or something like that, right? and kind of expand from there. Yeah, does that, does that help? Yeah, that helps clarify. I'm also curious to hear a little bit more about like, how do you imagine the kid to interact with this device? Like, is it something that a parent gives them, um, you know, for a certain amount of time? Like, what, what do you imagine to be like the user story or the user journey there for this experience? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question too. So, uh, so I guess I assume that in the beginning that this is gonna be like a mobile app on, on the phone, but I think that's a kind of a, that's, that's kind of a um, big assumption because, you know, I, 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 me personally, as a parent, I don't want my kids to use my phone, to use the phone <laughs> for for a while, right? So let's think about like other than a mobile app, it could be some toy, like some toy phone that they play with, uh, an electronic toy. 
um, or like the iPad or some other thing that the kid has access to, right? I, I, think, I think the challenge with like a physical toy is like, you know, with, with a phone or iPad app, the parent can just install it and you can get distribution pretty quickly. But with a toy, you actually have to buy the toy itself and that can limit the adoption of the toy. Uh, so yeah, there's trade-offs there. But I think, yeah, but, but I think a, a phone or iPad app could work. Uh, especially iPad, because kids like to play with that a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, well, as we get towards the end of this interview, Peter, I'd love to hear, is there anything else that you want to share about this particular product design before we jump to feedback and kind of talk about the interview? Um, I think, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to really start with the, the customer problem. So we're talk, here we're talking about, and we kind of narrow down the problem space because imagine we're like a startup trying to build this app for kids. If we try to build an app that covers like teenagers, preschoolers, and toddlers, and like you know tries to just be everything to everybody, it's probably gonna fail. So in this case, I think the solution I came up with it is really trying to use games and use like you know this kind of like structured communication to to kind of differentiate ourselves and also address the customer pain point around uh, helping kids have fun and communicate with each other and helping parents control. Uh, who their kids talk to. So that's kind of what we came up with. Totally. Um, well, Peter, this is awesome. You did an awesome job with the interview. Um, you're done now, so take a deep breath. Um, I want to share some of the thoughts that I had about what I thought you made you a really effective interviewee. But before I do that, any other comments about the interview or meta comments, you know, about like how you feel like it went? Uh, yeah, so I haven't, I've been a little bit out of practice, but I think it went pretty well because I think, um, you pick the topic that I'm, you know, personally interesting. Sometimes you just get lucky, right? But um, and it's also like a fun problem to solve, right? If, if you ask me about like cloud computing or something, I'll probably have to like think through everything. But this is like a personally, this is like a pain point that I personally feel. So in some ways, that made it easier. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, and I thought that really shone through in the answer. Um, let me just jump into what I thought made this a really effective interview. Um, I thought you did a great job kind of doing the customer segmentation. One key element, especially we're looking for as interviewers is understanding that the customer or the user uh, may be different. So the customer in this case would be the parents or, um, and the user may be the kids. There's some uh, nuance there about the definitions of those words, but ultimately there's two people or two parties involved in this experience. Um, and you call that out early on. I think um, you also did a great job summarizing, checking in with me sometimes throughout the interview. There was a couple times where it went on a little long and I wanted to check in, but overall pretty good. Um, and I really loved, um, you, you kind of had this uh, one line in there. You're like, oh, I'm gonna summarize this in one line. Kids to have fun and parents to have control. Um, and I think like that was really, really helpful and really crystallized what we were doing with this whole exercise. Um, and so that's a really important tactic for those watching. Um, definitely like at some point in your interview when you feel like you've gotten towards a solution or a vision of what you want, summarize that into one crystal clear line. It can be really, really helpful. Um, I thought you did a great job implementing fun, delightful features. Another thing that I would be looking for as an interviewer asking this question is, does the interviewee know to add delight and know how to add that kind of stuff into products? And you know, you look at products all like from Google and their Google Doodles to you know Slack and their emojis. Like delight is actually a key principle when developing products, and so that's something that I'd be looking for, especially when targeting uh, younger demographics. Um, and then I thought you also brought in a nice human element of like, hey, I'm a father also, and you know, this is my experience and things like that. And um, you know, to an extent, those are really helpful and valuable in interviews to, to share that kind of stuff. Um, so I overall thought this was a really awesome answer. If I had to give some constructive feedback, I think it might be a little bit more around the pausing. Um, you know, we did kind of uh, peter out towards the end in terms of like, it wasn't exactly clear if you were done with the product. And so, you know, you can indicate that to the interviewer and just say, hey, like, this is kind of where I'm at. Um, how does this sound? Do you want me to go deeper or do you want me to stay where I am? Um, and that kind of helps uh, define the scope of the problem. These product design problems are hard because you never know how long to go and they're always variable and interviewers can take you in different directions. So that's part of the, the difficulty with it. Um, but let me pause there. Peter, any thoughts, reactions to that, and anything else um, that you wanted to share with viewers before we close today? Uh, yeah, I think all your feedback is like totally fair. It makes a lot of sense. If I were to add one more constructive thing, I think um, when you define a solution, it's good to pause for a moment and think about what the North Star vision could look like. Kind of like, I think that helps to inspire the viewer of what you can achieve. It also shows that you have like the strength 
strategy aspect down too before kind of walking backwards and going to the MVP. So I, I kind of started doing that a little bit with like the platform for games, but probably could have elaborated on that a little bit more. Totally. Um, but overall, Peter, really awesome answer. Um, again, Peter, you have a book. Could you share a little bit more details about your book for those watching? Yeah, so I wrote this book because it was difficult for me to transition to product management initially. And I, I want to, you know, just as like you, I want to help folks make an easier transition because it's not like some crazy magical thing to get into. It's, it's just like product management, right? So yeah, the book is called Principles of Product Management. It has three sections. One is about uh, principles to follow to kind of be a good product manager. Second one is about like the product development process, like uh, you know, understand the problem, identify a solution and so on. And then the third part is more about like getting the job, you know, find the right company to join, uh, different practice interview questions and interviews with other PMs. So yeah, hopefully uh, check, check it out and hopefully you find it helpful. Awesome. Um, well, Peter, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. For those watching, um, the book link will be in the description below as well as some other resources and links um, again, this is an exponent mock interview. We have more of these on our YouTube channel. Do please subscribe and like this video if this was helpful to you. It means a lot to us. Um, and uh, you can check out more resources to help break into product management roles as well as other tech roles at tryexponent.com. Um, thanks again, Peter, for such an awesome mock interview. Um, and to those of you watching, good luck on your upcoming interview.